was thinking about how sad my skateboard must be, sitting in a forgotten corner destined to a life absent of tricks ever since a guy named Chad sold it to me. But the days are becoming more sunny, so I can't help but imagine cruising on my board with the wind in my hair and, most importantly, finally landing a kickflip. Kickflip? To advance? Okay, finally landing an ollie. However, I'm going to need every leg up I can get to accomplish this, and I've watched enough 90s rom-coms to know that the solution is a makeover. All right, folks, next up on the glow up is primer. She is still looking a bit smurfish, which is sad because it throws out my idea of leaving some areas unpainted, but I was just, I was done. I was done sanding. A quick wipe down to get rid of the dust, and then it was time to add a layer of gesso. Oh, and look at that, I immediately got it on my fingers. About halfway through, it occurred to me to read the instructions since it's been a while since I last used this, though I don't know why I bothered since I was just gonna ignore them and do what I wanted anyways. Speaking of which, I immediately followed up the first layer with the second layer and then called it good. Priming is done, now I'm gonna leave her out to dry. No, I don't mean like that. I'm just started by gathering inspiration. I love the idea of leaving some of the wood unpainted, but I guess I'll have to leave that for another day. Even so, I kept being drawn to this tiger one. I was reminded of my obsession with tigers as a kid, so I decided to follow that idea until I came across this tiger stretching. That's when I made the best Google search of my life. Like, are you kidding me? Do you see these faces? I was sold. I had my theme, it was time to start sketching. I grabbed my iPad and got to work using this model that's in Procreate. The rough sketch had me feeling like I was going crazy for a minute because I could not figure out how to draw a tiger's face, but eventually I polished it up and had something. The design is finished and I'm so excited I'm going to print it out and start putting it on the board. To get my sketch on my board, I'm going with a classic graphite transfer. That means printing the sketch onto three sheets of paper to match the same size of my board and then covering the back in graphite. At the last minute, I stopped myself from adding the transfer to the prime board because it occurred to me I could save myself a lot of headache if I went ahead and put down a green background. So I mixed up a lot of green with a bit extra yellow, gave it a first coat, waited impatiently, and gave it a second coat. The next day, I taped the design to the board and then firmly traced it with a pin to transfer the graphite from the back of the paper to the board, creating a perfect outline for the next step. Thanks for tuning in. The products we will be using today are paints and paint brushes. Let's get started. All right, I'm mostly using decade old Walmart acrylic paints that yes, make me feel like I'm at war with my painting. Or maybe that's just acrylics in general. I've never quite gotten the hang of the blending and I'm too much of a turtle for how quick they dry. So just know behind the brush is one face of intense concentration. I feel like I would do better if I switched paint brushes, but also I feel a weird sense of commitment to this one that I've already chosen and been using. The sun started to set at this point, so I decided to pack up and resume tomorrow for what I thought would be my final day of painting. But my paintings never seemed to go according to plan. I'm beginning to wonder if I drink too much caffeine to be doing line work like this. There I was, swatting bugs, racing against the setting sun, and feeling like a toddler with a paintbrush. Welcome to the, oh no, this might be a failed project phase of the process, I suppose. These lines are gonna haunt my dreams. Yet I persisted, until I was putting the final touches on the background and a uh, raindrop landed by my brush. I quickly evacuated only minutes before it started pouring, but I wasn't going to let a little rain stop me, so I set up in my office and I got back to work. Now, despite struggling with the leaves earlier, I was feeling hopeful and maybe a bit delusional about finishing this tonight. I focused on a few tips I learned, like maintaining a good water to paint ratio and not rushing. But you know, if there's one thing I've learned over the past few years about art, it's that art doesn't have to be so serious. You mess up, paint over it. You really, really mess up, just start over. Art is about doing. Which brings me to the reason why painting a tiger on my skateboard felt like a natural choice. Tigers, along with sharks and dinosaurs, have always fascinated me, despite not fitting the stereotypical girly interests. Skateboarding also fits that category, so it's kind of a nod to my childhood appreciation of tigers and their strength and beauty, while also being a playful defiance of stereotypes. 
Tigers are supposed to be serious and cool, much in the same way some people view skateboarding and even fine art painting. But my tiger isn't some serious, ferocious piece. It's a smiling, happy little guy, harmlessly stretching. To me, being unserious is freeing. Interests like art and skateboarding shouldn't come at the expense of fun and lightheartedness. But with that being said, I'm warning you now, I am going to look pretty goofy riding this board. But why care? Eventually I did finish the first orange and white layer, and then I quickly gave them another coat. That's about when I started hearing birds chirping. Yikes. The sun was already starting to rise. Obviously I'm not getting this done tonight. I don't know why I'm whispering, but it's like 5.30 a.m. So I feel like it. I also feel like I'm the world's slowest painter. I don't know why this is taking so long. Final touch is coming soon. Later today after a long nap. Hey, it's me from the future. I finished my board, but I did mess something up, which you'll see later. Anyway, I just want to take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. As a creative person, I absolutely love collecting new hobbies, and I love exploring and learning more about the skills I already have. This summer, I made it my mission to dive into all kinds of creative endeavors, and specifically, I have been focused on painting. As you may have noticed, acrylic paints have always been a bit of a challenge for me, but I've been taking a couple of the acrylic painting classes from the experts on Skillshare, like this one and this one, and and somehow, I'm now excited for any future projects where I get to use acrylics. Just in case you haven't heard of Skillshare, they're the largest online learning community for creatives like us. They have tons of classes led by real experts from painting, illustration, and filmmaking to productivity, freelancing, and marketing. They also have made it super simple for anyone just getting into a new hobby or skill and isn't sure where to start by designing a curated list of classes to take you from beginner to master called Learning Paths. Conveniently, there's one for acrylic painting in case you also want to paint your own skateboard and need a few tips. I can't recommend Skillshare enough and I'll leave a link below so that you can get to exploring all their class options today. Oh, and the first 500 people who use my link will get a one month free trial. Now time to put some of those tips I've learned to use and finish the skateboard up. We've reached the final day, which means we're ready to give our tiger his drops. Oop, sorry, almost dropped you there. No problem though, let's get our paint. Oh, I almost forgot his nose though. So we're first gonna drop the paint cap, of course. And now we can get to mixing up some pink. Ugh, how come I can't open paint without getting it on my fingers? Serious hats on, it's not gonna be easy to fix any mistakes made with this black. Yikes, that was quick. I cut the outline of the nose a little too close on one side, but it's no problem. I just gotta make it match on the other side. Despite struggling with the leaves earlier, I really found my rhythm while painting these stripes. To a random Google article that said that 12 hours is enough time to wait before I add polyacrylic over top as a varnish. Look at me being a responsible crafter and actually reading the instructions before starting. Anyway, I decided to do three coats of the varnish waiting a few hours between until the board was finally finished. Enjoy the reveal. Are you about to run this after spending 20 hours painting it? Yeah, a little bit. Also, did you notice that you forgot to add the little black whisker spots? You know, we could have just pretended not to notice. Just saying. Well, it didn't take long to get my first scuff on the board, but I guess that's to be expected. Either way, I decided to start practicing my ollie in the grass. Oh, no, that was definitely not an ollie. Better, but this is definitely gonna take a while. Eventually, 
Eventually, I mustered up the courage to practice on the concrete, despite the potential scuff marks and broken bones. And after about 100 attempts, I was starting to improve. So, it was a great count. I'll let y'all be the judge, but just so you know, it does match the Wikipedia definition. Yeah. 